Hi guys, you are watching Oxy Vlogs. Uh, this video will be different from other videos on my channel. And if you watched my previous videos, uh, you know that I interviewed Madina. Madina is the founder of Rice Assist Company. She helps uh, women to get a job of their dreams in Dubai through trainings and empowerment. So today she prepared a very uh, useful uh, presentation for you about job search strategies in 2018 how to adapt to the current job market in Dubai how to be, uh, how to be visible um, in front of the recruiters and uh, what the recruiters are looking for so uh, if you're looking for a job in Dubai if you're planning to move to this city keep watching this video it's quite a long presentation it's not for everyone but uh, you will find a lot of useful tips information here which will help you to get a job in Dubai and uh, if you find this presentation useful please don't forget to hit the like under this video give us your feedback in the comments below it's very important to us and um, let us know if this presentation has helped you in any way so in the beginning, I would like to tell you why you should implement our advices, why you should listen to this presentation, and why you should believe that the strategies that we are advising really work. So as you know, we are Rise Assist Business Training for Women. We train personal assistants, executive assistants, virtual assistants, and also we train solopreneurs. But uh, at the screen right now, you can see the reviews of the employers who come to us sometimes and ask us to refer some of our graduates for uh, their requirements. And this is one of the shifts that we're seeing in the market, like people don't want to advertise some positions, they just want to go and pick the candidates in the places that they are sure those candidates uh, you know, are registered. So you can see one of the reviews. This is Bryn Jones from Heriot Watt University. He has hired one of our graduates, Jasmine, and you can see both of their review screenshots. And um, the other example is uh, one of our recent graduates, Mikael. So uh, she has done two courses with us, executive assistant and the solopreneur. And as you can see from, from her review, she has um, landed a dream job within one month uh, after graduation. And and uh, also you can see the review of one of the employers who have interviewed Mikhail. So as you can see, both job seekers and employers with our help see immediate results and uh, they can see the effect of our strategies and our education. So I hope you are now all motivated, you are all ready to implement, you prepared your notepads and pens and you are ready to dive in into the content. So let's look at the UAE job market changes, why this has happened, why the shift that you are probably noticing started happening two years ago. So let's look at some pure facts, pure data. First one is the excerpt from Robert Half UAE report 2018, which says that 48% of businesses in the UAE will now be focusing on implementing new technologies, talent management and company growth. More and more companies will continue to automate and digitalize their operations. You guys probably have noticed now if you're going to call uh, any telecom company or a bank or any big uh, establishment, you probably are going to be answered by a machine. And you're going to pass like long ways to actually speak to a human, to a customer service representative. And this is the example of digitalization, digitalization, I'm sorry, and automation that all these companies are now implementing. Now, is it a good news or bad news for you? We'll cover that later. Also, the other insight is that admin and HR become the backbone of UAE businesses, which means the more qualified you are in any of those areas, the more chances you have to land the job in 2018 and why those uh, positions are in such demand is because first of all uh, in order to digitalize and automate you need a strong admin support and strong HR support to actually include the newly required candidates. The other impact that we are seeing is the changing natures of work, changing natures of the positions which means that in-demand uh, candidates now need to be 
kind of more expanded in their expertise. They need to be able to do more tasks. They need to be able to perform faster, better, and more in creative, uh, more with creative approach rather than the old, uh, you know, mechanical approach, uh, come to five, uh, come at nine, leave at five. That won't work anymore. The other insight is that qualified business support staff become one of the most in-demand talents, which means if you have skills and knowledge of the software that actually can ease the processes and you can effectively provide a multi-dimensional business support, you will not have any problem landing a job in 2018. What does it mean for you? What those insights mean to you? First of all, you need to focus on becoming a tech-savvy candidate. If you are uh, still, uh, you know, kind of saying, oh, I don't really like technology, I'm not really tech-savvy, it's time to change that if you are now on a job hunt. You need to focus on uh, learning various tools, uh, softwares, systems, and strategies that you can bring on to your new employer and help them make their work faster, easier, and more effective. The other thing that you need to think about is which ROI you can bring to your future employer. ROI means return on investment. Your salary, the compensation that the employer is paying you, is their investment in you. I would like you to think what kind of returns can you promise to your employer when they, they are going to take you on board. And if you can document that, that is going to be a bonus. I'll tell you later why. The other thing is start working on developing your focus, listening, and productivity levels. Uh, one of the biggest, um, let's say, opening eye-opening facts uh, in the recent research on you know, uh, human performance in general is that our focus and listening skills have drastically dropped. With the rise of technology, with the rise of social media, we are seeing a lot of disturbances during the day, a lot of... Um, uh, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, various times when we're not able to focus. And therefore, uh, the focus and listening levels are dropping. So I would highly recommend you to start working on enhancing those. And the other takeaway is try to become a noticeable standout expert, not just a job seeker. Like you don't have to position yourself as a job seeker anymore, but you rather need to focus on positioning yourself as an expert, as the person who knows it all in his or her sector. Therefore, work on developing new talents and skills, learn and polish your soft skills, adapt to change and upgrade your expertise level. Let's go further. What does the LinkedIn say? So as per LinkedIn report in 2018, companies are going to focus on four pillars. First one is innovation. Employers are going to innovate their interviewing techniques and selection processes to increase effectiveness. Why this is happening is because the competition is fierce. So you probably read that report that says that nine out of 10 employees are now searching for a new career opportunity. So you can imagine the amount of CVs and unfortunately, majority of them are irrelevant that are landing in the inboxes of recruiters. So uh, the selection process has become more and more difficult because of the competition. Therefore, companies start innovating and they focus on more fierce selection process. So they are now implementing the skills testing, video CVs and interviews, and job auditions in order to eliminate bias. So, uh, you know, previously there have been instances when people pass the interview only because their CV was written by an expert, but when they actually start working, the reality, you know, hits really hard and everything becomes quite different. To eliminate that, recruiters are now working on a more robust selection process. The other trend is diversity. So recruiters will be focusing more and more on finding uh, people from diverse backgrounds because 80% of talent acquisition leaders are saying that diverse teams are actually more productive. The other trend is technology uh, that is implemented in the screening process. So our partners, Leap, are exactly dealing with that. They are the only artificial um, intelligence recruitment power platform uh, right now in Dubai, the innovative recruitment platform. So the artificial intelligence screening tools are going also to help recruiters to minimize their time while screening thousands of CVs. And also employers are actively working on developing new selection automation strategies 
technologies as well as screening processes, they will be diving more in depth during the interview process. So that's one of the reasons uh, why you should work on developing your expertise. Now is the perfect time to start working on uh, deepening your knowledge, you know, widening your uh, contribu possible contribution and ability to illustrate and present that. So what does those in insights mean for you? First of all, you should focus on becoming a headhuntable candidate. Um, you know, recruiters are really struggling to review all those thousands of CVs that are landing in their inboxes, as I mentioned, and that is why they prefer to headhunt candidates that are um, looking like people that they are looking for. And of course, where do they look for those headhuntable candidates is on LinkedIn is on those uh, job search platforms. So your visibility becomes now crucial. It becomes extremely important. The other thing you need to focus on is building your confidence based on the wealth of obtained knowledge. Your confidence will be boosted only when you will focus on learning and developing your expertise. Because that's when you won't be afraid of any screening questions, but also your language, your application, your approach will change. Also, you need to work on practicing, illustrating your potential contribution. As I told you, employers start thinking about employees as a potential ROI to their company. So I would like you to think about the following question. How adding you to the team will really impact the company? Don't think about it as, as an interview question, you know, that you're going to answer during your interview. But think about it subjectively, honestly. Like if you just have this dialogue with yourself. What is the real contribution that you can promise and you are sure that this is going to be the reality? Again, if you can write it down, it's going to help you and you'll see how in just a few minutes. Also, I would advise you to start auditing your past achievements and documenting them. Think about what you have done for your previous company that really brought some impact. Think about the feedback of your peers, colleagues, and supervisors. What did, it, what did they tell you about your performance? Uh, what were the noticeable improvements that you have brought on board as a team member? And the other thing I would like you to practice, which will really help with your um, interview practices with those new tools, is try to answer those questions, uh, these questions sorry, in writing. How did you make a difference to a company that you have previously been employed by? Just write it down as a story and then read it to yourself. Uh, believe me, this practice is going to really help you obtain the confidence and also perform better during the interview, whether it's a phone, video or live interview in future. So as you can see, there have been huge changes that are now happening. And uh, we cannot stop those changes because um, <laughs> the, the process is already on. And the usual human reaction to a change is resistance. Let's try to understand why do we resist the changes? Why we are so afraid of them? Usually we resist changes because there is this fear of the unknown. Because it is a step out of our comfort zone, we are not sure what this change is going to bring to us, whether it's something good or something bad. And normally we start projecting the worst scenarios. Also, change is a challenging thing and it's hard for us to adapt to it. Also, change is risky and the outcomes of this change are usually unknown to us. Managing change for us involves many steps such as preparation, planning, execution, adaptation and management. And because we, we don't really want to go through all these cycles, through all those steps, naturally we try to resist the change. But I would like you to understand that the change, when it started happening at such big scale as the job market change or economy change, does not really depend on us. And therefore, in order to adapt to this change, the first step is to accept that the change is happening and we can't do anything about it. The only thing we can do is adapt to this change and become uh, the most prepared to handle it. Uh, apart from that, I would like to look at the positive side of this change. Because change is an important part of the evolution. If there was no changes, we would not see the digital world. We would not see the smartphones and the laptops and the computers. Therefore, change always leads to an improvement. Also, it's usually a process of optimization with a goal to reach a better state. Therefore, you probably heard this quote that says, change is always good. Remember that change occurs as a reaction to an ever-changing environment, or it is a response to a current crisis situation. 
I think you've all noticed that the economical situation has started changing worldwide, not only in the UAE. And therefore, as I said, we cannot stop the change. The best thing we can do for ourselves, for our families, is to adapt to this change. And the first step in order to adapt to the change is to change your mindset. I would like you to stop thinking not as a job seeker, but as a careerist. What is the difference between someone who searches for a job and a careerist? Job seeker is acting usually desperately. Job seekers are applying everywhere without actually screening because they think quantity always wins the quality. While careerists, they always use targeted approach. They don't want to land any job. They want to land a job that is going to create for them a better future, more opportunities. And careerists always win faster. That's why I would like you to start changing your mindset and how you can do that. First of all, eliminate this fear and doubts that you have and start boosting your confidence daily by learning, growing and networking. Second, try to eliminate complaining because one of the um, problems of the job seekers, they do complain a lot about the situation while they could take the energy that they take to complain and the time and utilize it into creating more opportunities for themselves. The other thing is position yourself only to succeed. Do not allow yourself to have a thought that this won't work or this won't happen. Believe in the positive outcome and that will boost your confidence to perform daily action. The other thing is try to seek, seek evidence of success of others. Try to follow those job seekers who were just like you and they have landed a job. Don't follow people who also complain about the same thing and they are in the same boat because it trains you to think negatively and you are less and less encouraged to do any action every day. The other advice is look for a mentor or a coach. At the moment, career coaches are one of the most popular uh, people or most sought after people online. The reason being a good career coach can really help you to tune your CV, to boost your confidence, to guide you towards expert positioning, help you optimize your LinkedIn profile and teach you how to approach employers and recruiters directly and how to become a headhuntable candidate. The other thing that you need to do in order to change your mindset is to take daily action. Only learning and implementation will take you to where you want to be. First step to take the daily action and to actually ensure that your strategy is correct. Remember that you need to develop an action plan with plan B and plan C. Like think about it, if you apply to this company and they don't get back to you, what is your plan B? And if you approached an HR manager on LinkedIn and they did not respond, what is your plan C? The other point, focus your efforts wisely. Like don't spread your efforts everywhere, don't use the blanket approach, but rather focus on targeted approach and results are going to be much faster. Implement a daily learning hour. As I told you before, you need to deepen your expertise and you need to start working on becoming a tech-savvy candidate with the demand. So I would recommend to start diarizing, <clears throat> sorry, a daily learning hour in your diary and start learning and implementing and practicing in order to become an expert. If you fail or things don't work as per your plan, don't lose the motivation because failure is an opportunity to learn from your mistakes and become better and better every day. Uh, failing is also a part of your path to success, remember that. So let's try to measure your current expertise index. Like how uh, far do you think you have gone in your sector or in your industry? I don't doubt that everyone who is listening is a professional in their field. But let's measure how do people really perceive your expertise. First exercise is let's run a digital audit. How can a stranger recognize your expertise before seeing your CV? If someone Googled you or added you on LinkedIn, does your profile really tell them that you are really good at what you do? Is there any piece of content that can illustrate to a complete stranger that you are really professional in your sector? Second assessment is how up to date are you in your sector or in your industry? What was your last professional development activity? Which course or certification did you get? How did you broaden your expertise? Which new skill have you learned? What was the last industry-related article or book that you have read and it was really useful? Who do you follow from your industry leaders or who is your role model in your industry? 
And then the last exercise or uh, last assessment is possible contribution. If you were asked to write an article with a unique contribution about your professional field, would you be able to do this? And if yes, let's write down what would it be about. I'll tell you later why we need this information. We uh, can use your expertise index to become visible to potential employers and uh, recruiters. There are thousands of people who are searching for people like you online, but they may not contact you just because you are not visible. I would highly recommend you to consider the advanced tools for becoming visible at hand and headhuntable. They are active networking and professional blogging. You can blog through LinkedIn articles, through Quora, or you can start your own blog. If you will just spend daily 20 minutes to write short blogs about your expertise, about your experiences, case studies, you will not only become visible, but you will also help others and you will become noticeable. And this kind of visibility will bring you tons of opportunities in future because your goal is not only to get a job right now, your goal is to never look for a job again. The other tool is your networking. You probably know that in the UAE, network plays a major role when you are finding a, finding a new job or changing a career uh, path. Therefore, work on strategic networking. Add the right people to your connections. Start conversations with them and therefore build relationships. You can start uh, with a very simple tool. It's free. You can start meeting people through LinkedIn, meet up dedicated events related to your industry, related to your sector, or events. There are so many events that are running in Dubai literally every day. Just screen those events on Facebook and start networking with people there. And remember, in network, there is one rule which says no one is irrelevant. Maybe uh, during one job-seeking workshop, you're going to sit next to a lady who can recommend you to someone. You never know which opportunities a new meeting can bring you. And of course, your main visibility tool should be a video seat. I highly recommend you to develop one-minute video introduction. Believe me, it will make a drastic difference when you are applying to your dream job. So how to become a headhuntable candidate? Remember that only targeted applications approach really work in 2018. Blanket approach does not work anymore. Copy-pasted CVs and cover letters do not work anymore. Evaluate your possible ROI to your employer before applying. Consider temporary positions and freelancing gigs in order to develop learning, expertise, and development of your professionality as well as your network. Again, you never know what those tamping or freelancing gigs may bring to you. Plus, why not to use your time while you are on the job search to actually try something new? Customized CVs, video introductions, and conversational cover letters are the tools of 2018. Again, no more blanket approach. No more, um, you know, quantity over quality, but rather focusing your efforts and illustrating potential contribution to the right people. Position yourself as a confident professional, not as a desperate job seeker. Write targeted letters, start targeted conversations, illustrating which contribution you could provide. Don't forget to optimize your LinkedIn and add your case studies. Remember when I told you that you should document your contributions and achievements? Guess what? We can take them and just put them on a PDF and upload them to your LinkedIn profile as a case study. Your chances for visibility and headhuntability will immediately increase. Focus you on your daily online presence to develop conversations and research LinkedIn and the other job boards in order to find the positions that will be the exact fit to your expertise and your skills. So, there are a few tools that you should master, ROI illustration, developing your expertise, daily learning, tech savviness, and visibility. Thank you so much for listening to me, and if you have any questions, don't forget that you can book your free career consultation on www.rileyassist.net. So, if you are still watching this video, I believe you found this presentation useful. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because there are more useful videos to come. And please support me with your likes as it helps me to grow my channel. And if you have any questions, don't forget to leave the comment below and I will try to get back to you. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.